Hey everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to Live Your Language, tips and inspiration for your bilingual life. I am Stephanie, a PhD student in second language acquisition and a mother to two children now that I'm raising bilingually in my non-native language, French. And today we'll be talking about something that I've really been thinking about a lot lately, and that is what does it mean when we talk about high quality language input? So when researching high quality language input, a couple things became apparent pretty immediately. Um, the things that really stood out to me are that there are two main aspects of language quality. The first is the variety of the language and um, specifically how representative is the language that you're introducing to your child or whoever you're teaching of what you actually want them to be reproducing. The second aspect is what elements of your language or the teacher's language are you offering that make it easier for the child to comprehend what you're saying? So I found that the best way to think about this is think of it as like a diet. So when we're thinking of having um, a well-balanced diet, there are a couple aspects. So the first aspect might be, um, let's make sure that we're including a big variety of um, all of the essentials, proteins, leafy greens, whole grains, all the elements of a rich diet. So when we think of language, that would be the variety aspect. So are all of the elements of a rich linguistic diet there. The second aspect would be um, comprehensibility. And we can think of that as digestion, basically all the things that can make whatever element of language that you're introducing as easy to understand as possible. So we find that with language input, it often becomes a balancing act between offering authentic um, input and making sure that it's um, simple enough to be understood, which sometimes um, hinders the authenticity. So it's often just a balancing act. So first let's talk about a variety and the richness of the items that you introduce. In my analogy, this would be akin to making sure that there's a variety of fruits and vegetables, healthy items in the diet. In language, what this basically comes out to is is everything that you want your child to demonstrate as a language speaker present in your diet. So if you want them to speak like a native speaker, you need to make sure that you're offering plenty of exposure to native speakers, not just uh, TV shows or interactive electronic games or apps or those sorts of things. You wanna make sure that the child-directed language is high quality and that those speakers are demonstrating a variety of other things. So like contexts, registers, but also linguistically. So is there plenty of, of vocabulary being introduced? Is that vocabulary being elaborated on? So for example, um, we all know that in our native language, there are many ways to say something simple. The second language or the foreign language is no different. So you wanna make sure that you're introducing multiple ways to say the same thing and that you're really cushioning this um, vocabulary with um, plenty of elaboration around it. Look at this wall next to me, um, it's white. It's flat, it's smooth, you know? Oh, look, you can actually see the brush strokes from the paint that have gone down here, you know? So it's uh, simple enough just to say this is a white wall, but there's also a lot more that you can say. And you wanna make sure that you're providing plenty of elaboration um, in the vocabulary that you're providing. All right, so in discussing the second aspect that I mentioned, the comprehensibility, the items that are going to make it easier to digest, quote unquote, the language that you're introducing, um, there are a number of things that you wanna consider. So the first one that I wanna mention, just because it's that important, is language feedback. Now, for a lot of people, this comes pretty naturally, um, even in their first language, where your child will say something in a way that's kind of funny or cute, but not right, and you'll just um, repeat it back to them, but with the proper part of speech or conjugation or um, whatever. Uh, the mistake will be corrected. That's a recast, but there are also a lot of other ways to provide feedback. So um, feedback is really important and we can't ignore that in talking about high quality language input. So another thing that is important to consider is um, something that linguists talk about as mother ease. So uh, you might think of this as like baby talk, the way that we talk to children. Um, it's slow, it's repetitive, it uses pitch and emotion. Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So these are the sorts of elements that make it easier to understand. These elements are often taken for granted, really, because they're very valuable. Other important things, um, routines and patterns. When you provide things in a way that is very predictable, it makes it really easy to deduce the meaning. 
So make sure that you're including plenty of routines and patterns. Also, don't forget the importance of context. When you have a rich context around you, often the meaning of a word is very clear. So make sure that if you have the opportunity to use the context or like an object, for example, um, anything that you can touch and hold to make sure that the language that you're providing is um, as understandable as possible. Basically, you wanna ask yourself, how can I make the meaning of this word as easy to deduce as possible? And that's gonna really help your child um, understand and internalize that word. Okay, thanks everyone for watching this really quick video on high quality language input. I hope you found this helpful. Um, please leave comments and questions below. I read every single one and I will see you in the next video.